Hello everybody, how are you? Hope everyone's doing well. Um, hope everyone's getting accustomed to hopefully things reopening soon. Um, I can't wait to go to the barber once they open up on the 22nd here in New Jersey. Um, but to start the episode today, I'm going to be going over bridges more in depth, um, into bridges, different types, uh, what can they be used for, um, and how beneficial they can be. Also, how you can use them, obviously they're for aesthetic purposes, but how can you use them for aesthetic, uh, aesthetic purposes in preparation for um, getting your entire treatment plan done uh, while looking great and taking care of everything at the same time. Uh, so without further ado, as always, as a disclaimer, I'm not a dentist. Uh, I just have many years of experience in dentistry, selling treatment, educating patients on um, what different what treatments they have, what the doctor found, or what could have potentially caused it, and what can they do to prevent themselves from causing it again in the future, um, not only for them, but for their family members and friends and loved ones. Um, so without further ado, bridges. So I've gone over bridges before when we were talking about a prosthesis, um, but like I said, I'm going to be going more in depth. Now, a bridge is essentially just like a normal bridge where a car passes by. It's it's a connection of crowns put together that are hold are held either by implants or um, your natural teeth. And the one thing the the thing that's beneficial for them that a lot of people like about bridges. Is that they're stationary they don't they don't move you never have to take them out you pretty much have to clean but you do have to make sure that you do clean more thoroughly because it is different you do have a space in between um, between where the two teeth are where the two implants are where you know liquids and foods and stuff could potentially fall in there and you want to make sure that that area is clean to prevent any bad odors or smells so it, it is a little different in terms of the cleanliness but it's not something out of the it's not something that it would be different you might have to maybe just buy um, some sort of flossing that's a little thicker and help clean in those areas than just your conventional floss. Um, other than that, everything it's fine. Now, there are different types of bridges and they're used for different purposes. For example, you have your conventional bridges, um, which could be either be made do, uh, done with zirconia or porcelain metal crowns, which I had gone over before when it came to when I spoke about crowns in the prior episodes. Uh, and then you also have special crowns that they're called biotemps. Um, and there's different varieties, and the main purpose of those is, and the good thing about them, is that they're they're not as invasive as your conventional crowns. And the reason why is because they're they're mainly used as a placeholder. They're not something that's permanent. It's something that's it's temporary. And the reason why it's temporary is because it's something that you can place in the social fix on the front part of your teeth or on the bottom to give yourself that smile that you love and you want and you want it to work so so much on, in preparation for the actual permanencies. So for example, if let's say you have a person who's just not taking care of their mouth for the, long, for the longest time, and now you wanna go into the dentist and take care of it, but obviously it's a treatment that's gonna take a very long time. Um, not a very long time, but it's gonna take a longer time than what you want. And it's also gonna be a little bit more costly for you to take care of immediately. I'll bet there are you know treatment uh, financial programs and stuff that can help you, but in the event that you don't qualify, you can use biotemps and they'll place them on your teeth and then you can in the, in the as time progresses either do root canals do fillings get other get crowns so on and so forth and and putting those on your teeth underneath until you are you know until you you get to the final phase where you you switch over from the biotemps to the actual you know be a bridge or just more crowns or fillings and stuff and and it's 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 a very unique way of doing things um it's been it's been around it's fairly new but it's been around for a while for a little bit now and um and not a lot of not a, i've not not a lot of offices do it so it's not something that's very famous but it is available um, my recommendation to you is that if, if this is something that you think that suits you um then you should definitely talk to your dentist and figure out how they could implement it and work with it with you and i'm pretty sure that you'll be happy because the cool thing about it is that you will literally walk out of the dental practice with a brand new smile and you'll love it. And it'll, and it's there and it's, it's there to remind you of what it is that you're working for, because sometimes it's a little difficult to be able to see, um, the final product when you have to wait so long, it's a lot better when you actually see it there constantly every day on a day to day basis. And, and you're, and you know what you're working toward. So it, it I would definitely, I would highly recommend you getting that. Um, so, with the there is one thing with and I, and I spoke about it before when I talked about pro, prosth, uh, prosthesis and I spoke about it before when I when I spoke about pro, prosthesis and when it comes to bridges 
uh, with the exception of when you do it with implants, um, there is one, there, there's kind of two things. They're not really negatives, but just two things you have to be precautious for. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't get a bridge because there are a lot of people that get bridges and they've had them for many, many years. My mom, for example, has had her bridge for well over 40 years. Um, she got it when she was a teenager and now she's in her 60s. So, um, but there, there is a, two things that you have to be aware of and it's one of the reasons for why you should definitely take care of your, your mouth. Um, especially if you have, again, like I always say, if you have something that's foreign, not part of that your body didn't make, then you definitely have to take more care of it because outside of zirconia crowns, but even so, you, you have to take more care of it. You have to be more attentive to it because it can fail and it can fall off. And then in addition to you losing it, that's, that's money wasted as well. And we're not in the business of losing money. That's for sure. Um, so, but continuing, going back to that, you, the one thing that you, two things, again, that you have to look for, uh, look out for is one, when you get a bridge, um, with your natural teeth, you, you're essentially sacrificing the two teeth that are going to be holding the bridge, or it's sometimes three or four teeth that are going to be holding the bridge. And you want to, you want to, you want to take care of yourself because if anything happens in the future, so let's say, for example, you get one of the teeth that's holding the bridge, you have to do a root canal or the bridge, God forbid, breaks for any reason. Then what happens is that now you're not replacing one teeth, one tooth, because obviously you're, you're filling in for the one that you were missing. But now you you have to rework on the entire bridge again, and you have to do it as soon as possible because you're not you're not dealing with just one tooth. Now you're dealing with three. You have the one that's missing, and plus you have the other two that were set in to make the bridge fit. So you 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 know it's you're kind of you know you're you're helping one at the sacrifice of two, and hoping or not even hoping, but you know with the idea that you're going to be taking care of yourself, and you're never, not, none of that's never going to happen. So it's something you have to take, take into consideration. The second thing is that, unlike implants, a bridge it's not is not going to prevent the the gum line or the bone loss underneath where the where the, the tooth that's replacing the tooth. It's not going to um, it's not going to prevent that from happening. So as time progresses, you are going to have gum receding underneath the bridge. You are going to have bone loss underneath the bridge because there's nothing sitting there. Um, so you can fall into a situation where, you know, just liquids and foods, it might be easier for them just to seep underneath there. And the reason why is because of that, but that's not something that happens after a year or two. It's something that happens, um, maybe five, 10 years, you know, 15, maybe 20. It's everyone is different in terms of how they lose bone in, in their, in their jaws. So there's, there's no really no definite, the specific time, but it, it will happen. Um, now again, these are not things that you should get discouraged about, but it's things that you should just pay attention. Now, obviously, if you get a bridge on your on the back, it's not really something you have to worry about. If you get a bridge in the front, then you just have to make sure it's done correctly. And again, these situations you're not really going to notice because they're on the gum line, and you normally don't see the gums when you're talking or when you're smiling. You normally see just the teeth, so it's not noticeable to the eye. It, it's really only noticeable either you're going to notice it and you're not going to like it, and it's going to bother you, but you're the only person that notices it. Um, well, unfortunately, when it comes to aesthetics and, and, and looking good and all these things, those are the things that most of the people want to get these things done to themselves. It's mostly because it bothers them far more than it bothers anybody else. Now, obviously, there are certain things that, not that it really matters if, if it bothers somebody else, because at the end of the day, what really matters is how you feel and what makes you happy. Um, but yeah, there, there are a lot of, I've had a lot of patients that they come in and they tell me, oh, I don't like this, I don't like the way this looks, or did you notice this? I'm like, you can't see it. I'm like, the only person that sees it is you. You're the only one that makes attention, puts attention on it, and you make it a bigger deal than what it is because it's really not noticeable at all. Like, look, I'm like, you can look at a mirror, smile, do this, do that, and it's not you don't notice it, but you know that it's there, and because it bothers you, you want it taken care of, and that's perfectly understandable. And we and in, in those occasions we take care of them. But I, I I tend to make a point to people and let them realize that hey, this is perfectly fine. You know, if, if I were if if it was either done by us or if it was done by somebody else, I you know I'm very honest with them and I tell them hey, this is fine. But if you want to change it, that's entirely up to you. I have no no problem with that. And they, in most occasions, I would say ninety five percent of the time they go yes, please change it. <laughs> um, so. In the next, in the following episodes, as I said before, I'm going to be going more detail on more procedures and how they're done. Um, but for today, that's everything. So as always, flourish and prosper. Have a good day.